All right, let's talk concrete countertops. I'm in bedroom two, where I've got two American Standard undermount sinks going in here with uh, studio suite widespread faucets. So I'm really excited. And I've got kind of like a makeup table, kind of get ready area here where I'm gonna have a bench. Now in this bathroom, I had to reduce the cabinets, their width, so that I could get a decent hallway through here. I don't really think that it's a big deal because most people are just gonna stay here for like a week and this is gonna be adequate for them to enjoy themselves. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna show you the exact step-by-step -step that I take to do undermount sinks and the whole process to form up the concrete countertops. So to start, I'm gonna bring in some half-inch plywood that I've measured for the full width, tight from the edge to the edge, and I measure to the front of my gable of my cabinets. Now you can see here I've got some sink cutouts already done here. It was because I was working on my sink centers, just trying to figure out everything. With, with the sinks, sometimes the decal is off center and people use the decal to kind of decide where things are. I like to dry fit it and kind of like visualize what's going on, make sure I find my exact centers. So I'm gonna bring a sink in here and show you what I mean. And then I'm gonna show you um, how I got these sink center lines there and there. All right, you can see here's my line. So now I'm gonna sight through the overflow hole and the drain hole and make sure that I'm centered. That actually looks really good. Now I just want to make sure I have the same front and back on both sinks. Inch and a half, inch and a half, three and a quarter, three and a quarter. Great. So that's my sink positioning. Here's my form made up for the undermount sink. And again, I just took the dimensions for my steel right off the template that American Standard supplied with the sink. Now I'm going to kind of set this over top, making sure that it's positioned perfectly. And then I'm going to trace around and that's going to be my cut line. Then once I've cut that, um, in shy, just a quarter inch, I'll slap this up underneath and that's how the sink form will get created. In the second screen is a demonstration of how I built the sink form using the American standard template, some two inch by two inch, 20 gauge steel angle, and some half inch plywood. To fasten the steel, I use wafer screws and definitely use your square to square the steel. One last thing before I get ready to pour the concrete, I need to set these brass inserts so that I don't have to drill into the concrete later. Now these brass inserts are what's going to hold the clips that are going to hold the sink up underneath the concrete sink or underneath the concrete countertop. So what I'm going to do is use the American Standard template, put it over top, center punch it, drill it through and actually use the screw to set the insert exactly where it needs to go. Then when I'm done, I'll strip the forms and those inserts will be perfectly ready to drive the screw back up into it and hold the sinks there forever. Okay, now that you've brought your half inch plywood in, it's very important that you fasten it near the back, but not tight up to the front so that you can get your steel angle iron up there, or your steel angle. Now, that's where this bar comes in handy, but any cabinet usually has a top rail or something there, so that's what I'm doing here is I'm gonna sandwich it right between these two layers.
Here's my two inch by two inch 20 gauge steel angle. Now I'm just gonna get it up underneath. Now I'm gonna measure, because I know my plywood straight, I want a one inch. Most countertops are about an inch and a quarter, but that's the limitations of this two inch steel is I thought that if I tried to stick it out too far, that it would um, get a little too wobbly. So I stuck with a one inch overhang and it looks pretty good. I like it kind of more flush with the cabinets than the normal, so. Now that I've got my steel running nice and straight and measured perfectly, this is when I'm going to use my little wafer screws and go underneath and lock it into position. That does make it sandwich in there quite strong. Like that's just two screws into this plywood. So you'll see I'll also add some one by fours across here just to support so it doesn't flop out. All right, I got sink underside form two. And I got a dead man that I'm gonna to use to prop under it so that I can get this to stay still while I try to line it up perfectly. See, I can see you're right on my center line right there. And I'm looking for four and a half off the drywall and I'll know I'm at the right spot. There's four and a half. There's four and three quarters. So go back. Got four and a half, now I'm gonna screw that down. Once I'm happy with both form positions, I will use some silicone just to seal that little crack that'll be around the plywood joint. Now it's time to set the sleeves so that we can install the faucet after the concrete countertop is poured without drilling holes or making holes. I didn't want to damage the integrity of the concrete trying to core holes so I used some inch and a quarter EMT conduit cut to half inch thicker than the two inch concrete I'm going to pour. Then I'm going to use a hole saw screw up or drill out the locations, tap the sleeves in, make sure they're level with each other and the sink form, and a bead of silicone to hold them in place. I set my sleeves really wide, flush with the edge of the undermount sink and center for the spout. I'm really liking the Studio Suite widespread faucet. I think it's gonna be quite nice to have a different look with it being so spread apart. I'm just gonna use some tuck tape to seal up the corners so no concrete will leak through there. And then I'm gonna use some inch and a quarter floor screws on a four inch grid, screwing them into the plywood about a quarter inch and after I'm done that I'm gonna wind tie wire and create like a mesh attaching right to the screws twisting around them. Now after thinking about this for a long time and watching other people pour concrete countertops I was looking for a way to bond the top with the base and what I've got going on here is that once the concrete cures around the mesh and the screws, it's basically completely attached to the plywood. So this is gonna make it like ultra, ultra strong. And that's what I was going for. Now, if I ever do wanna remove these countertops, I can just use my oscillating cutter 
and get at the screws at the back side and carry these out as a whole piece. Time to pour. I'm using Quickcrete PSI 6000 Concrete. This is a high strength mix and I'm using just a little bit more than the recommended water so that it's easy for me to move around. I really like the aggregate that's in this concrete and because I'm going to sand my finish after and bring some of the aggregate to the top. Also the price point, I think I'm paying like $12 a bag compared to like some uh, special mixes they want like $60 a bag. So this is just gonna work perfect for me. Now you can see once I've got it flush to the top, I'm using a hammer to hit quite hard underneath to make sure that I'm leveling the concrete. Then after I've got an oscillating tool to vibrate that steel edge. I'm looking to have no honeycomb on the steel edge. So I want to make sure that I, I hit it a couple of times to bounce out all the air. So here I go again, tapping everything, making it come down to that perfect flush. And I'm just using a magnesium float at first. And here I am kind of like sharpening it up with the steel trowel. Then I'll let it sit and hit it a couple more times. Nothing too special because like I said, I'm going to sand a lot of my top off to get the aggregate to come out before I stain it. I really suggest making a sample piece before you get going so you know exactly what you're going to do. We're going to put a white stain over top of the gray and seal it with a matte finish. After leaving the countertop for about seven days to cure, I will use an orbital sander and sand off the top layer to get some of the aggregate to expose. I didn't videotape that process in bedroom two, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you what I did. After sanding, I used some feather floor patch to skim a slurry across the nosing to really smooth it out. I wanted it to be a little more polished around the face of the nosing and around the insides of the sinks. After letting the feather patch dry for an hour, I go through and do a second because it does shrink back and then I go and sand it. Stay tuned for an upcoming video on this kitchen where I've got two undermount sinks, 36 inches wide and a couple other countertops completing my whole kitchen for less than $200. All right, back in B2's ensuite washroom, where I've done the same prep to get ready for the white stain over the high strength concrete. We chose a white stain over gray because we liked how it changed the look from the raw concrete. And I'm just using a sponge to apply. The next day after the stain is dry, I'm going to apply my primer coat and complete the countertop sealer. This is a two-part countertop sealer XS327 made by Surecrete. It is designed to give me a matte finish. All right, so I've mixed two parts of this, three parts of this, mixed it together for three minutes and let it set for 10. Now I'm supposed to add seven parts of water, mix for another couple of minutes, and then it's ready to use. This one's the most water. This first primer coat, you add the most water. Through the other coats, you reduce the amount of water. And after you're done about your third, or your primer, and then two coats, that's where I stopped. It's, it leaves it with a really nice, like, uh, rubbery feel, like leathered granite, almost. like. If you felt uh, leather granite, it's kind of like leathery feeling. That's what this does. And man, like if you, if you clank like a uh, glass on concrete, it's really like kind of loud. But when you put the sealer on and you get the t finish the two coats, when you put plates and cups on the concrete, it's kind of muffled by like the thickness of the coating. So I really recommend like if you're gonna do concrete countertops, don't 
cheap out on the finish. Like don't just get concrete driveway sealer and put it on because you will not get the same effect as what I'm going to show you guys right now. So I'm going to put my seven parts of water in here. I recommend when mixing and using the sealer that you run some fans and make sure you have great ventilation. Some final shots of these undermount American Standard Studio Suite sinks and Studio Suite widespread faucets from American Standard. Just going to toss these mirrors up quick before I do my final task, which is uh, putting some stru structural supports across the front of the sinks. I never want the sinks to crack in the front edge and if somebody sits there they are very vulnerable so I'm going to add some 2x4s on edge and just screw them through before I put my fronts on. Thanks for watching we've got tons of new videos coming out I've got a bunch of concrete countertop stuff down in the kitchen and a full other washroom to show you. We have a whole American Standard partnership going on where I'm going to show you start to finish plumbing in two kitchens and three washrooms. And of course we've got all the tile work in here, how to do those mirrors recessed into the tile work, and a bunch of bunch of other new stuff coming out. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.